journaling, I thought I would work through my backlog of art supplies to review. Now, many of these have been sent to me by friends who, and I laugh when I say that because we are indeed friends, but as art nerds, we send each other mean things sometimes. And my friend Sam sent both the Zig Pearlescent Watercolor Jewel Box, which she says is quite good. And she also sent the Artist Loft Pearlescent Watercolor Pan Set. So we're going to be taking a look at both sets individually and comparing them to some other pearlescent watercolor options. Hey guys, so I've got the Artist Loft Pearlescent Watercolor Pan Set. It's got 28 pans. This is part of their fundamentals line. And this was also sent to me by my good friend, Sam. Um, again, for the purposes of review, <laughs> I think Sam enjoys watching me squirm and that's why I always sit so many of these pearlescent sets. But thank you very much, Sam. As mentioned in the Zig Pearlescent Watercolor Jewel Box video, my friend Sam has a website where you guys can download these really great, I mean, I use them and I used them before I actually knew Sam. So it's really kind of cool that it's like, oh man, you made these great uh, Photoshop brushes. I love those brushes but Sam makes these really great comic and manga effect brushes and you can check those out at shootingstars.org and you can check my description below for a link to that. But we're gonna go ahead and get on in to this set. Oh, they also include instructions. All right. So the list of colors is Blue, brown, champagne, cobalt blue, coral, crimson red, dark blue, dark gray, dark pink, green, light green, light gray, light orange, magenta, orange, pewter, pink, purple, rose, sap green, scarlet, silver, teal, turquoise, ultramarine blue, violet, white, and yellow. And there is instru- oh, there's a brush guide. That's kind of neat. I may have to share this with my vlog readers. So if you are interested in that, you can check out natosoup.blogspot.com. So the Artist Loft Pearlescent set has, it's really a very attractive little set. It's got these cute domed uh, wells and it also comes with a brush and I think it's been taped shut because it does not want to open. It really, ha, okay, got one side. Come on, come on, got it, all right. So, this is what it looks like opened and it looks a lot like makeup. And it comes with a really scraggly, I mean, this is a crummy watercolor brush. I really do not recommend you guys use this thing. Let's wet it, let's, let's live dangerously, nope. No difference. Okay, so we're gonna throw this away. This thing is no bueno, not good. And I am going to go ahead and add a drop of water to every pan and give it a chance to activate. So I have my much nicer Jerry's Artorama Creative Mark Rhapsody Kalinsky Sable brush, which I use for a lot of my painting. And they are not a sponsor, so that is just me enjoying their product. I think you should try it. Um, I'm adding a little bit of water to every pan, and then I'm gonna step away for a while and give the water a chance to activate those pearly pigments in each of the pans. And that's a lot of colors. I'm not even sure how many of these are not just kind of duplicates, but we'll find out when we swatch them. Okay, so I'm gonna let those soak in and I'm gonna step away. So I'll see you guys in a few minutes. All right guys, so our paints have had a chance to activate and I'm just going to go ahead and swatch each one. They do seem to give up their pigment a little bit more, or whatever they're made out of to be honest, give up their color a little more easily 
than the Niji, and they are a bit more opaque than the Zigs. But they are, at least after allowing them to activate, they're fairly heavy body. They, it feels like there's a fair bit of glycerin in them. And these may actually be really good for those of you who do hand lettered art. Like brush lettering and such. Because it seems like there's a fair amount of body to these paints. Um, so, as well as some opacity, although some colors do appear to be transparent. And if it continues, where some are opaque and some are transparent, I may do an opacity field test for you, or an opacity test for you guys to help y'all pick. And unfortunately, I'm not entirely cleaning the brush. I'm getting a little bit of blue from up here, but the colors, uh, at least so far, this isn't a full demonstration, but the colors seem to blend into each other decently well, which would make them also ideal for those of you who enjoy doing brush lettering or decorative lettering. Um, and I could see card makers and scrapbookers really enjoying these because they're very inexpensive. You get a lot of colors. And uh, many of these colors are, in fact, opaque. Or at least they seem like they're going to be. But I am having trouble getting all of the color out of the brush. I'm going to list the help of a paper towel and zoom in. Now, so far these aren't chalky uh, the way these sort of inexpensive hobby grade watercolors tend to be. I think they use, um, like I'd mentioned earlier, probably a lot of glycerin because they are a little bit soapy feeling. But that doesn't have to be a bad thing. Glycerin and even chalk do help keep the cost down. And I've seen a lot of artists put, or rather a lot of um, brush lettering artists put um, those inexpensive Artist Loft watercolors to good use. I think they work best when you keep your layers very, very simple, even down to just one layer, the original layer of color. And I think if you treat them sort of like wash, expecting them to always be opaque, that they may also, that may also be where they, oh, I got black in that orange, I gotta clean that out. Um, that may also be where they shine. Ooh, that purple is like, I expected that to have a little more color to it, but I am actually kind of impressed by these. Uh, they have a good range of color, a good range of opacity, and they are pretty sparkly, although not as sparkly as some. So I'm going to let these dry and I'll check in with you after they've dried. All right guys, so those artists locked uh, pearlescent watercolors had a chance to dry. They took a little bit longer than some of the other watercolors. They have a nice sort of pearlescent sheen to them. Um, I think I'm going to have to do an opacity test with these since some of them do seem more opaque than others. So I'm going to go grab a permanent marker and we'll get to it. All right, guys, I went ahead and I swatched a selection of colors and I didn't try to blend them into each other, but I did apply them next to each other so that if they were going to naturally blend, they could do that. And um, sometimes uh, Sharpie can be hydrophobic, so sometimes it will repel water and that did seem to happen, but I think this gives you guys a pretty good idea of the opacity. There is some opacity to these watercolors, but most of that comes in the form of the iridescence rather than in the form of color. So I will see you guys when I field test these. 